The really big issues in this election are housing, the crisis facing farming and the death of rural Ireland and the closure of small family businesses. And believe it or not, all three are interconnected and interrelated through the lack of finance and banking. And I'm here now with Seamus May, who is the chair of the International Small Business Alliance, who is a, an expert in the whole area of corporate law. And uh, he's going to chat to me now about public banking. So Seamus, you have done huge work over the last number of years highlighting corporate corruption and cartels and so on that exists mm -hmm. you know right across every sector your own particular area is the concrete industry but the you know, now in recent times uh, b um, have highlighted the cartels that operate in the beef industry and in banking and so on well yeah i have a lot of expertise and experience in the area of competition law competition economics as distinct from pure corporate law i've been at it literally for decades at this stage and uh, my experience in the construction materials sector, it brought me into um, several other sectors. I've studied the beer sector, the beef sector, bread sector. Banking sector was a very big one and probably the most interesting of the whole lot. And I have found that all these sectors are run the same. It's the same people, it's the same game. Uh, it's the same white collar crime, it's the same corruption. Um, uh, but. The be all and end all one is definitely that everything starts and finishes with banking. Okay, so I'll just pick you up on a point there. Mm. Uh, so what I think I heard is that you're saying a small select group of people sit on the boards of these various bodies, whether they be banking or um, cement uh, industry or whatever, mm. that you have these, that they sit on the boards of various corporations mm -hmm. and bodies and they're all interconnected is that true well yes to be uh, cross directorships i mean and and kenny uh, i think he was only a few days in office in 2011 and he talked about a slew of cross directorships all of which he was going to deal with none of which he dealt with but that's one of the ways where where you know it's all to do with what, what they call legal corruption and legal corruption is is to do with cronyism and and, and patronage and capture <clears throat> and state capture and where say where corporations are able to capture a whole department the banks can capture the department of finance they say they they, they uh, meat processors and, and the and the retailers can capture the department of agriculture and um, you know other companies can capture the department of enterprise uh, enterprise trade and employment when it when it comes to competition law so we're dealing with, um, at, at the very least, we're dealing with legal corruption across across the board. And <clears throat> it has led to making Ireland the, the wild west of white collar crime. And like there's so many areas that need to be investigated. The International Financial Services Centre, that is a big one. And nobody has been allowed and nobody has done. The, well, I actually believe there is a, a university professor and I may have quite a bit of work done on, on the IFSC, which is something that we're going to get in touch with about and, and discuss. But like in the main, yes, we have looked, uh, along with my colleagues, I'm joint chair of the Public Banking Forum of Ireland. And along with my colleagues in, 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 in the PBFI, we, we produced this document here. I don't know if you can see it. It's called Creating Ireland's uh, Alternative uh, Banking Force. <coughs> And we launched that document in March of 17 to coincide with uh, the, the government, the Department of Finance and the Department of Rural Affairs were doing a feasibility study uh, in relation to uh, public and community banking. And they were doing that be because, excuse me. My it's okay. Let me get rid of that. This is what happens on a live. <laughs> they, were, they were doing that in relation to um, uh, uh, the programme for government. The programme for government uh, had a, an undertaking in it that they would look at the feasibility of public and, uh, and, and, and community banking. But you see, it was actually a prerequisite of the bailout that the Irish government would introduce a competition into the banking market. And don't forget all the banks that we lost, uh, um, EBS, we lost Irish Nationwide, we lost uh, the ACC, we lost Bank of Scotland, we lost a whole host of banks, and, and Anglo-Irish of course. <coughs> so the prerequisite was to uh, introduce competition. But what has the government not done? What has Fine Gael not done? Ably backed up by Fianna Fáil, they have refused to countenance competition in the banking market. 
So now we have a few pillar banks that kind of control banking in Ireland. It's more or less a cartel, a banking cartel. Would I be right in saying that? Well, you know, um, y of course you would. Uh, we can say that the banks are acting in a, in a coordinated fashion. Uh, which we can easily say that we can also say that they're colluding. Of course, they're coll they're, of course they're colluding. I mean, there was a headline in the paper last week: Ulster Bank uh, uh, has a record low mortgage rate of two point two percent, and we were all supposed to jump up and down about it. But the fact of the matter is that's double, double the mortgage rates in Germany. You can get a you can get a, a, a thirty year mortgage in Germany fixed for ten years at one point one percent, and we're supposed to be in the single market. The common market, the single market, but yet our bank interest rates, they're not just double. Because if you go in and you work your way through the banking system, you're actually paying three, four, five times what our counterparts in France and Germany are paying for finance. Okay, so I'll just pause you there for a moment. And for people like myself, sometimes it can be difficult to grasp finance. So what I'm hearing, Seamus, is that Irish people, whether they be the small business owner in at Loan or Longford or Mullingar, uh, who has a loan from the local bank, the mortgage holder, or the young people who are going in to get a mortgage, or the farmer who's trying to work with mm. um, the help of a bank loan, that we are paying through the teeth for this money, for the loan of this money. That it's 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 a multiple of what uh, our counterparts in other countries across Europe, like Germany, have to pay. Is that what I'm what what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. And the government are making sure that we're doing that. Because can I just explain? We're supposed to introduce competition to the market. Now they had a similar problem with dominance in New Zealand, and in 2002, the New Zealand government, at the behest of the people, turned its post office into what they call the Kiwi Bank. So they turned their post office into a bank. Now, we have made very in-depth proposals to the government and to Fianna Fáil, uh, again, supported by John McGuinness, Mark McSharry and nobody else. And we have made these proposals time and time again um, uh, to turn the post office into a Kiwi bank. Now, that would have saved all the closures. You see, it's all very well the government saying, oh, well, the post offices are losing money, so we have to close them. But of course they're losing money because the model is wrong. We need to change the post offices into the Kiwi Bank model, where the post offices can create credit and loan money. Kiwi Bank it was set up in 2002 in New Zealand, and it now has over 20% of the New Zealand bank market, uh, banking market, and it has resulted in bringing down interest rates and being more and creating a more competitive uh, banking setup. So all we need to do at the stroke of a pen is to turn our post offices. Now let me tell you about the three car trick. The post offices now uh, on post are telling us that they're becoming banks so that you're going to be able to get your car loan and your mortgage or whatever else from a post office. True, but these are actually going to be loans coming from possibly the Bank of Santander in, in, in Spain, the AIB, the, the Ulster Bank. So what they're going to be doing is agency banking. Now that's a completely different ballgame because what happens is they're just being used as agents to suck the profits and high profits out from the local communities and back into the hands of the corporate banks. So it's the same game. So it's not banking, it's agency banking. So we're being screwed. We're being screwed again and, and like we, we are supposed to. We, as a result of the bailout, we have to introduce competition, but our government will not will do anything but introduce competition. They might tell you about the Strategic Bank uh, Banking Corporation of Ireland, but that's another scam, effectively, because uh, the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland doesn't loan to you or me, it loans to the banks, mainly AIB and Bank of Ireland. And it's loaning them. The figures we got from SBCI was that they were loaning money uh, to the banks at 0.8%. And these banks were then on loaning the money at up to 5%. I mean, all through the years when I was in business, a, a big markup was 2% over, over cost of funds or 2.5% over cost of funds. These guys are getting literally 4% over cost of funds and wait for it. And this is what the SBCI told us, that, that they in turn are guaranteeing 80% of the bank's exposure. So the bank isn't even taking risk. I mean, it's, it's beyond a joke. And you won't hear about this on RTE.
You won't hear about all of this stuff in mainstream media, which is why it's so difficult to get people to, to take their votes away from the parties that are causing all the damage. Because if the people don't know what's going on, in effect, they, 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 don't know, they, they can't do anything about it. And if maybe you had a question there. I did uh, about, about what you're talking about is actually commonplace in Germany, you might say. Uh, well, absolutely. But before we go to the public and the community model, if we just have a quick word about the credit unions, because the credit unions are being illegally suppressed by successive governments. They can't lend to limited companies. They can only lend a tiny amount of their funds to uh, long, for long-term uh, loans and for medium-term loans. Uh, there are so many restrictions. And the vast majority of the money that they get in from you and I, we go in and deposit money, they are obliged to lodge that with the commercial banks. So the commercial banks are using the credit union's money, our money. And uh, like they're, they're currently, at least over the last couple of years, the returns that the credit unions are getting is minus. So it's costing them, say it was costing them 0.25% to put money on deposit with the banks. And that's just exactly what has happened with the, uh, with the Apple tax money. Just if, if you bear with me for one second, it's a slight drift, mm. but we have all this 13 billion uh, collected and it's in an escrow account but we're getting negative tax we're getting negative interest rates on it so it cost us last year somewhere in the region of 75 million just to hold this money on account so what we need to do is we need to take because the credit union movement will not survive the way the credit union it's been wound down it, it's uh, it, 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 they're all merging because they're being forced to merger and what will happen it'll be the same as what happened with the co with the cooperatives in the agri they will eventually be corporatized unless and until we wake up and cop on. So the credit unions are going nowhere and they are fantastic. They have kept many as a family, most of the families in this country going. Ease up and down with the cash flow. So and the other the other alternative that we have of course is if you look at the German the German banking model, Germany is the fourth largest economy in the world and by far Europe's largest. And and Germany's banking market is seventy percent of the German banking market is with the public and community banks, 70%. The, the commercial banks, the, the, the pillar banks in Germany like Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank have 12.5% of the market. In Ireland, the pillar banks have in the region of 95% of the market. And our government is the reason. They are protecting these effective monopoly or duopoly, whatever you like to call it. They're protecting them. They're allowing them to get away with charging us scandalously high rates. And um, they're telling us we're an island economy. We're not. We are part of the single market. And we can't go to Germany and borrow money there. We, we should be able to borrow money in the same terms and conditions over here as they can in Germany. So we have worked very hard in the Public Banking Forum of Ireland to set up um, uh, public banks in Ireland. Now, I was saying earlier, the Department of Finance and the Department of Rural Affairs did a, did a feasibility study um, in accordance with the Programme for Government, and we attended it. And I can tell you that the reception we got from the most senior civil servant in finance was quite hostile. They did not want to know about this report. They did not want to know about competition in the banking market. It was shocking. So later on, as in, in the, during the past year, uh, the government commissioned yet another report on the feasibility of uh, th this public and community banking uh, by, by Indicon economists. And uh, again, they found that there was no case for, for public uh, or community banking. Of course, I mean, the, the constitution of this country, Article 45, Section 2.4, specifically says that the control of credit in Ireland will be done in the public interest. And it's not been and done in the public happening. interest, it's been done in the corporate interest. Now, I should say, Article 45 is a direct principle of the Constitution. It's, it's the responsibility of the Rectors to bring in laws uh, to, to, to enshrine the, the article. But it's the same thing. So, so there's no competition. Uh, we're finished with this stall term and there is no competition. And, and I can tell you very, very straight out, Michal Martin does not want to know about public banking, about taking the shackles off the credit unions, are about turning the post offices into a real bank. So the problem is we're not going to change things by just changing government. I, I'm, I'm somewhat confident that if John McGuinness, Mark McSharry, a few of these people are in, that we may we may force the hand of, um, of Michal Martin, but there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. So, yes, a lot of information mm. there. Mm. 
Um, can, can I yes. just give you one practical example again? Like, just take the agri sector. It, it's it's mm -hmm. clear as day that farmers need to take back more of the value chain. They give it away, they work on whatever, but they, they, they're losing money on the output, on the primary output, and this cannot continue. They've got to come back and they've got to do further processing on their, on their animals, and that can only be done. I, I believe myself we need to set up new co-ops, but this time we must, we must uh, make sure, protect them from corporatization, that they can never be corporatized. But they will need money. So they will need the shackles off the credit unions. They will need a, either a post office bank or a public bank. Because the pillar banks who are already uh, funding the giants in each sector, whether it's the cement sector or whether it's the beef sector, whatever it is, they're not going to they're just going to say to you, look, there's overcapacity in that market. We don't want to know you. So, like, I mean, uh, and, and, and just, to, just, just for listeners, if I could make one point yes. about the German economy. There's 3.7 million small, and, sorry, there's 3.7 million companies in Germany, of which 99.95% are SMEs, small and medium enterprises or micro enterprises, of which 87% have turnovers of less than 1 million. That's phenomenal. That's an economy in Germany that's built from the bottom up, an indigenous economy that's built from the bottom up. We have in Ireland an economy built from the top down. The Googles, and I'm not, I have no, no issue at all uh, with, with foreign direct investment, but our economy is wholly imbalanced. Yes. And it goes back to banking. We want to sort out the housing, we've got to sort out the banking. We want to sort out farming, we've got to sort out the, 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 uh, the banking sector. It's across every single sector. Well, Seamus, it has been a pleasure talking to you. And as I'm listening to you now, um, you know, what a wonderful uh, asset he would be to the next government as a financial advisor. And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the chances of that happening are pretty slim unless um, John McGuinness can rein in Michal Martin. Um, just so much information there. Basically, um, the Fine Gael with Michal Martin and the vast number of people in Fine Fáil, most of whom probably don't know anything about banking, have allowed uh, the uh, few select pillar banks here in Ireland to um, form a monopoly and we're being nailed. We're paying interest rates um, probably up to five times what are being paid in Europe and it is crippling. Uh, business, small businesses, it's crippling farming and it is preventing young people from having the finance to build their houses. The post offices have been closed, the uh, credit unions um, are being used as a means of just mopping up the money that's out there uh, among us, the ordinary people of Ireland, to transfer over to the pillar banks. Just so much stuff there. Um, can I just yes. make one, one very yes. quick clarification, because people get to wonder, how, how can we be five times more expensive? Well, this is how. Small business in Germany can borrow up between 1 and 3%. In Ireland, you go in and you say to the bank guy or the lady or whatever, and they say, "Oh, well, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get that, and you wouldn't get that, and you wouldn't get a term loan," and then eventually they come back to, "But you know, we might, we can give you an overdraft, and I give you an overdraft of fifteen percent." So that's where I'm getting the figures. Yes. So it's not just as simple as, as, as that. Yes. So a lot of people, because they want to take 15% off you instead of 1% to 3%. Yes. Yes. So sorry, I just wanted to make yeah, that clarification. And that's a, 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 good, a, yeah. good, a good clarification. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching, and please share.